everyone. Um, of course, I'm very happy to be here. Um, probably before I start my talk, I just want to provide some context. Um, I actually even have a handout, and there's a context as to why I have a handout. Um, I've delivered this lecture when I was teaching in UP, uh, Diliman. It's in a class of probably 50 undergraduate students. That class was at 7 in the morning, so yay me for having a class at 7 in the morning with a class as probably big as this, also with bad acoustics. And, but this, this room has aircon, so it's much better than my experience in UP. Um, this, uh, so this is a lecture I delivered. Um, it's a, what I'm going to deliver this morning, is an, uh, this afternoon, is an abridged version because that was a, a, an hour, 30-minute class. So basically, um, what I want to talk about here is the topic of religion in public life. And my entry point to that discussion is a debate between two philosophers, and I promise this will not be boring. I guess before I talk about that debate, I just want to put forward a caveat. I don't particularly support entirely either side of the debate. It's my way of introducing the debate and facilitating a discussion with the group. So hopefully later we can have a more meaningful um, debate about the gradients rather than just saying yes or no for either side. So the debate I want to introduce is a discussion between Richard Rorty and Gianni Vatimo. So some people probably have heard of Richard Rorty. He's an American pragmatist philosopher. Uh, Gianni Vatimo is an Italian philosopher. Basically, um, the debate is the role of religion in public life. Both of them are pragmatist philosophers. Uh, Richard Rorty, in particular, has a very interesting position on truth. And it's very interesting that we talked about a little bit of truth a while ago. So as a pragmatist philosopher, Rorty's notion of truth is that what's true is what works. Let's not debate about you know, the, the philosophical foundations of what truth means. But what's important is what's true is what works, and what works is subject to debate. And that's the more important thing that we have to talk about, rather than having that philosophical discussion of what truth is. And his position, Rorty's position, is anti-clerical. And I think that's a fair position. He's not against um, religion as a whole. He's not against God as a whole, although he is atheist. Although before he died, he kind of had that moment at least in some accounts, that he did believe in God again. But in any case, his position is anti-clerical. Gianni Vatimo, on the other hand, the Italian philosopher, is Catholic. He's still alive. Um, he used to be in, um, in the parliament in Italy. Um, and his argument, uh, in terms of the truth, corresponds with what Rorty says. The truth is always historically situated. Rationality should be appreciated for its own context. And even scientific truths evolve, right? So his position is, again, pragmatist. What's true is what works. Right now, what works is science. That's why we think it's true. But maybe at some point, years, millenniums from now, scientific truth is no longer a useful truth. Maybe we'll all do uh, like a neo-religion, Madonna-type Judaism or something. So that's their position um, when it comes to what truths are useful. So why am I saying this? I'm saying this to contextualize the debate um, between the two. And basically, Rorty's position when it comes to religion in public life is that even in a secular society, Rorty believes that religion will probably not disappear. But acknowledging that maybe even if religion does not disappear in public life, what we have to acknowledge is that religion should be kept private and out of the public sphere. And I think a lot of people in this room share that view that, yes, it's okay whatever you believe in. If you want to worship whatever you want to worship, whether that's in the form of a god or a Miley Cyrus or some other pop stars you want to worship, that's fine. Just keep it away from public life, right? So who shares that view in the room? Right, okay. Yay, tolerant group, right? Tolerance is boring. I'm kidding. But to 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 tolerance is good, of course. Um, but what, what is Rorty's issue then? He's saying that it's important to keep, uh, to keep religion away from public life and keep it in the private sphere because traditional religion is inherently incompatible with democracy. Um, religion depends on fixed truths. It relies on doctrines. It, um, it's built on evangelization. And that is in tension with democracy's values of innovation, diversity, pluralism, and tolerance. So, the, in a nutshell, the argument is you should keep your religion private because it's, con it's inconsistent with democratic values. And instead of religion, Rorty says that what we need in society is social solidarity. 
right? It's that feeling we get when we are with, with a group of people. It's that feeling we get when, for example, you're in a baseball game or a basketball game or a football game, when you're in the company of a lot of people and you suddenly feel that there's something bigger than yourself, right? It's that same feeling that some people feel when they're in the church, that, wow, there's something bigger than myself. And Rorty is arguing that that's what we need, not religion per se, but that feeling that there is something bigger um, that are, than ourselves, and that, that matters. Um, of course, that doesn't mean that Rorty condemns believers or religious affiliations. He calls for pragmatists or pragmatic theists or those who believe in God, but want to make their religious or religious views private. Okay, so that's one part of the debate, and I think we're more familiar with that. But I think the more interesting part of the debate is what Vatimo says. Vatimo's argument is that actually, especially in a postmodern condition, religion does have a place. Vatimo views religion, and Christianity in particular, as a history of salvation. Of course, it sounds a bit, what? History of salvation? Well, what about the Crusades? What about all the abuses? But the interesting argument that Vatimo is saying is that the history of salvation is a history of interpretation. This means that Christianity is built on the openness to truth in different interpretations, depending on particular historical moments. So basically what he's saying is, what we need in a postmodern society is not a total rejection of religion, but a renegotiation of religion's legacy. Um, he's saying that um, religion must stay postmodern. What we, what we must keep alive in relation to religion is its openness to interpretations. And according to Vatimo, the only rule for interpretation is the rule of love or caritas. So, of course, the Italian sappy aspect that religion works if it promotes love and caritas. And in fact, he argues against Rorty by saying, if you think about it, religion does not have any tensions with democratic values. Isn't it that Christianity promotes values of tolerance? of reaching out towards others. Doesn't Christianity also promote values of, um, of giving people what they're due, right? And if I may quote something from, from um, Vatimo's statement, he's saying, if I feel tempted to abandon Christianity, it is because of the existence of the Catholic Church. My position is quite simple, but it seems obvious to me that nobody is opposed to Jesus Christ's message. If everyone rejects it, it is because of the Pope and the Church. It would be better for faith if the church did not exist. The problem is that without the church, the gospel might not have reached us. That is why he is moderately anti-clerical. So you get the nuance of the position. Now he's not saying that um, religion or the church as a whole is useless because without the church, the gospel wouldn't have reached us. But he's also saying that we need to reinterpret the doctrine. And why is it important to talk about this now? Because we are operating in a Pope Francis era that's such a rock star trying to get believers back um, in the church. So maybe that's another point of discussion because I think one important point of reflection here for people who are hearing Pope Francis's ideas for the first time is it's very important. Not everyone, I think, has access to the information that people in this room have access to. If you check the Facebook page of, Saint, uh, of Pope Francis, which I did, <laughs> some people actually said, some people actually had heard of the concept of social justice and redistribution for the first time, right? I wanted to compare this to another big figure in the United Kingdom, Russell Brand, right? Yeah, one of these five pages are, is it? <laughs> it's somewhere there. <laughs> Of course, for those who don't know Russell Brand, it's that bastard who broke Katy Perry's heart. But Russell, but Russell Brand has this, what they call in the UK, the Church of Russell Brand, who esp essentially espouses the same principles of rejecting the relentless pursuit of profit orientation of capitalism. He advocates for social justice. He advocates for new forms of democracy that reaches out to the poor. Of course, elitists like myself would say, but that's stupid. You've never read theory. You should have read theory. You should have read Marx. You should have, you know, you should have read all of these intelligent thinkers. But I guess my argument here is, but that's such an elitist orientation. For people who are hearing this idea for the first time, on balance, isn't Pope Francis and the Church of Russell Brand doing something good for people who are just starting their education on the politics of post-modernity. So I think that's something I want to throw out there. I personally don't have a position on the topic, but I guess what I'm saying is 
some Catholic values can be reinterpreted in a pragmatic way to have a more just and sensible society. So I guess just to close, um, I want to put forward so, uh, several reflections on what I learned from this debate between Rorty and Fatimo. One is, um, I like the way how the debate progressed, that it's not a debate that just had a pro or anti position. Is the church good? Is the church bad? I think that's one of the things that we have to get rid of and leave in 2013. I think we have to get rid of binary debates, are you pro or anti, and start talking about nuances. I think I'm coming from a very strong position here because I recently got a lot of strange comments from an article I wrote who kept on saying, I, I was writing about the be nice, basically, in, in Rappler, and then people were critiquing me, but are you pro, pro or anti be nice? Uh, that's not the point. There's a new one in that context. So it's... It's something I want to put forward um, because this is what this debate is. It's not a debate against or pro the church, but what kind of interpretation we want, um, we want for, for the 21st century. Another thing is I like how both debaters, Vatimo and Rorty, recognize that there's the importance of believing in something bigger than oneself. I think that's the danger when we start rejecting beliefs in a higher being, because definitely we have to remember that there's always something bigger than ourselves, be it society, a football team, a group of fans. That's something that's worth acknowledging. Um, and finally, it pushed me, it really challenged me to think about the role of religion in a pluralist and democratic society. I haven't um, attended mass in ages except for weddings. I've rejected offers of being ninangs in, in baptism because 30-year-old girls shouldn't do that, but that aside. Um, of course, I've, I've held my anti-clerical position, but I think that shouldn't um, deter us from acknowledging that, hang on a minute, the church also has that tradition of pl promoting pluralism and democracy. Here I'm thinking of what the church has done, not only in Latin America for liberation theology, but locally. The peace movement in Negros was initiated by the basic ecclesiastical community in the Archdiocese of Negros. Um, a, lot of, um, a lot of environmental movements have used the church as space to, um, to engage in their activist work. So I guess what I'm saying is, and this is where I am at the moment, and I want to emphasize the word at the moment because if there's one thing I really hate, it's certainty. But at the moment, I think that it's worth acknowledging that the church has also become an agent for engaged citizenship. And that has to be our criteria or criterion when we judge whether the church is useful or not in a pluralist democratic society. Has it promoted engaged citizenship or has it further polarized society into our own enclaves and thinking along with people who think the same way. You know what I'm saying? Has the church been that agent of bridging divides across different opinions? Or has the church polarized us further into having a discussion with people that we don't agree with? So I guess, just to have a random survey in the room, how many of us here actually have friends who are anti-RH? Like, actually good friends who are anti-RH and can stand at dinner with them for probably longer than an hour, right? So probably that's a criterion we can think about, that maybe if we can exist in that world where the church facilitates that kind of conversation, then maybe it has a role in society. And again, I emphasize that this is a provisional position that I have. I'm not entirely committed to this position, but it's worth having a reflection on the subject because I think the last thing I want to happen is to just have a meetup like this where we all just have a discussion among like-minded people and alienate others who don't think like us. So I think I'll, I'll end it there.